Hi, everybody. Welcome to No Reserve, part of the Haggerty Podcast Network. And we're here to help you make sense of the enthusiast car market, whether you're buying, selling, or simply watching. And we got a great show for you this week. We talked about everything from an 86 Toyota pickup to a brand new Lucid Air. Now, in between, we discussed a Ford Thunderbird, another record for a Toyota Super Turbo, and that 50,000 mile Ford GT. I'm Larry Webster, the editor of Haggerty Media. And I'm Dave Kinney, the publisher of the Haggerty Price Guide. Now, between the two of us, we've got decades of experience buying, selling, and driving the cars we love. Plus, we're backed by the data of the Haggerty Valuation Tools. Let's get rolling. Well, all right, everybody. We're recording this on Thursday, September 22nd, and um, the market's still really hot. A lot of things are happening, so let's jump right into our opening bid segment. Hey, Dave, what did you see? Hey, hey Larry. Um, another unbelievable uh, uh, Toyota Super Turbo. We have a 94, a sport coupe in black and black that sold for, uh, I, I, I'm having trouble reading this, $232,000. Uh, that's against our Haggerty Price Guide top price of one ninety. Now, we do count down the sports coupe right now, and I think we're going to have to make some adjustments, not only in values, but also in uh, counting down the sport coupe. I'm serious that people like them just as much as they like the uh, the hardtop. Um, it's a you know car with a rear wing. It's a one owner car. It was uh, sold by uh, a couple. Uh, the wife was representing the car, and uh, you know they answered questions like, "No, we didn't run a paint meter on it because we owned it all our life and uh, never had any work done to it, never had any paint work done." So uh, somebody paid up, and I guess they got a super nice Supra. Yeah, I mean this is in contrast. This is what the the manual transmission premium really represents. And we hear different things about this. The next generation doesn't want manuals. They can't drive them. Yeah. Uh, but that automatic one version of this we saw last week was like 140 grand. This is a huge step up above that, right? Yeah, oh, it's it's amazing. And the six-speed will continue to bring a, a premium for, I guess, as long as uh, as long as people are buying the Toyota Supras. Now the- and I, I think it should. But, you know, this car costs, Larry, this car costs 48895 That was the sticker price on this car, brand new, this particular car. That's, uh, you know, I mean, how can you, you know, how can you tell the guy down at the country club? Yeah, I just, uh, my best investment so far was the hundred and ninety grand I made on my Toyota Supra. Right. It, yeah, it's really impressive. I was a car and driver when these were still new. And I, I'm thinking about a, a lapping session I had at Nelson Ledges in one. And, you know, it's 300 horsepower. It's fast. You know, you really yep. feel like you're sitting on the rear axle. A, a fair amount of turbo lag. You know, it's a straight six with uh, two turbos, if I get it right. So they tried to mask it a little bit. But, you know, modern turbos, if that's what you're used to, uh, are way better in terms of response than this thing. So, but it handled really well. Great steering. Um, I would never have predicted it'd be worth almost a quarter of a million dollars today. So it's unreal. I, yeah. I, I was not a believer a year and a half ago. I thought that, you know, when they started topping at 125 and stuff like that, that there was probably nowhere else to go. I was wrong. Happy to say it. Uh, this one did have 13,000 miles, by the way, which also makes a big yeah. difference. Very low miles. Yeah. So you know, one owner, no miles, good colors. You know, it's got it all. I think these are going to be the next Ferrari Daytonas, frankly, right? Remember that wow. V12 Daytona from the 70s? They popped up to close to a million, and now they've settled down to about six, 700. You know, yeah, yeah. probably might, might go somewhere there. Okay, the next one I was, I was really curious about um, to see was, remember that, that it was a 2017 Ford GT that had 50,000 miles on it? And it sold we, for. We talked about it last week. We yeah. talked about it last week. You know, we love that somebody's out enjoying the car. These were about a half a million dollars new. This one still sold for more than a new one at six hundred sixty-six thousand. Yeah, six sixty-six, six sixty-six. The uh, that devilish number. Yeah, now, it should be noted that it did not sell on Bring a Trailer. It sold off of Bring a Trailer. So we actually don't know what the final transaction price was. Could have been more than the six sixty-six, six sixty-six. Uh, he reached a you know he reached an agreement with the. Uh, uh, with one of the uh, potential buyers, I guess, and, and bought the car. So it was bought offline. He announced it on the uh, on the site. The seller announced that it was sold. Um, so wait, Dave, what four, does that mean? You know, they uh, it was it was a um, it was a bidder that bought it, or somebody totally not on the platform. 
No, it was somebody on the platform apparently. And if you look at it, it says bid two six 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 six. It didn't say sold that. So we don't know exactly what the uh, you know what the what the buyer did. Uh, you know what the price was. I'm guessing it probably went for seven hundred thousand, something like that. Might have been the guy's reserve, but we don't know. But uh, you know, here's what we do know. Our number four in the price guide is eight hundred and sixty-eight thousand. Our number one is one point one five million. Um, this car, you know, cost in the four hundreds new. So I mean, this guy, you know, made a pretty good, uh, pretty good investment. Just the same. And like I said, Larry, one thing that you and I can agree on: this guy is our new hero. He bought a Ford GT. He drove it. He put fifty thousand miles on it. No, he didn't make a half a million on it, but he still made money. I think that's great. Yeah, I mean, the thing was, um, there is a hefty cost to that driving, though, right? Almost oh, a yeah, half a million yeah. bucks is what you're saying. Well, yeah, but no, but he made. So, I mean, you, you never, you're never losing money when you're making money, right? So, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, think of, the, think of the taxes he avoided. How's that? Okay. So, you know, yeah. look on the happy side, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Well, good for him. Um, well bought all along. Uh, Dave, what's the next one that you like? Hey, I like uh, this uh, Chevy Bel Air. You pointed this out to me. It's a 55 Chevy Bel Air. This is all about fun. It's got a 327, so it doesn't have a crate motor. This guy didn't drop a crate motor in, but he uses an old-school 327 and put a five-speed behind it. So I'm calling this car a resto mod-ish as opposed to a resto mod because, you know, resto mods, they like to put the latest and the greatest in. Uh, This guy went back and and did what he wanted and put a uh, 327 there. This guy... We say guy when we're talking about car people. We're always saying guy, but we're talking guys and gals. Uh, you know, we don't know for sure who did this, but um, it was a you know, it was a fun car, a Chevy Bel Air Sport Coupe, a '55. You know, part of the famous Tri Fives, five, six, and sevens. Uh, HPG uh, values on this. If it were a stock car, it would have been at a number four worth about 19 grand and a number one it could be worth as much as 72 grand depending on the motor now but this car sold for 26,775 and i think we have to call twenty-six thousand dollars, twenty-seven thousand dollars fun money in uh, today's market yeah. uh for a for a 50s car it's got a lot of panache it's got you know it's got spunk i guess is yeah, what it is yeah. it's got the it's got it going on yeah Blue and white i think this this was sold on hemmings um the reason i i like this a lot was for the reasons you pointed out, it's the 55, which the tri fives were 55, 56, 57. Uh, this was the first with the small block V8. Uh, this, the 55s had the really cool grill in the middle, you know, the shorter grill and the, I'm sorry, the narrower grill uh, right. on the nose. And um, I don't think these are appreciating things. They're one of those that are just stable, but the workmanship based on the photos looked quite good. Um, that, that the upgrades that you mentioned. So for 25 grand, I was like, wow, that's a lot of character for 25 grand. That's, that's what, yeah. I mean, you know, 327, even a lump of a 327 is worth something. Uh, Yeah. So I guess, uh, you know, I guess we're all good with this car. Uh, and like I said, you know, we're going way old school with this, but you know, so much of the market is still way old school as it should be. And, and so, you know, these guys getting their props. Uh, they're not worthless old cars like everybody was saying a few years ago that we'd never, ever get any money out of them. This guy's had fun with it, uh, and the new owner is going to have fun with it, whether he or she is a uh, uh, person who's just going to take it to shows or they're going to drive it around or whatever they're going to do. They're going to have fun. That's but, what it's all about. But, Dave, the Haggerty price guides for a car like this, they just, they're just pretty stable. They're pretty flat, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Right now, um, I mean, we do see some exceptional cars every once in a while bring uh, – you know, some, um, you know, some crazy exceptional money, but uh, you know, fifties uh, cars are they're They're kind of where they are right now. They're going to stay there for a while with some exceptions. You know what happens, Larry saying real quickly, sometimes they get notoriety because they appear in a movie or something like that. So, oh. you know, you never know something might come back and, you know, some heartthrob, some, you know, person, everybody wants to date, you know, whatever, whoever that Hollywood star is starts driving around in this boom, the car, the price goes up, the value goes up on the car. Yeah, maybe not yeah. temporarily. I mean, maybe not forever, but just temporarily. But we'll um, say. Speaking of value, you pointed out this one, this 1978 Mercedes 300 CD that was on the MB market. Um, it sold for $12,250. I've driven these cars a lot and they're really like, they're luxury cars. They're almost like German Lincolns, um, very soft. And um, 
Yeah, tell us why you wanted to talk about this thing. Because it's a I diesel love, too. I love this thing. It's a 300 CD. Um, it had 101,000 miles. And let's be real, real honest here. 101,000 miles for the Mercedes diesel guys. That's break-in miles. I yeah. mean, that's like, you know, these cars are barely used. This car sold for $12,250, and it was sold by uh, Ammo uh, New York City, which is a detail shop. So I'm saying it was a $6,000 detail on a $12,500 car, or a $12,250 car. I think that's awesome. The car looks like a million bucks. Uh, you know, they did a lot of work on it, did paint correction, did all this stuff. They took the interior out for the detail, Larry. I mean, isn't that amazing? I mean, this wasn't just some, you know, shoot and shine. This was a uh, like a take apart and, and cleaned it up. They said they found no rust in it or very little, I guess. I'd have to double check. But um, uh, not only that, it's maple yellow, which is a great uh, 70s color. It has the Palomino MB Tex, which is... MB Tex is uh, Mercedes speak for vinyl, and it's a good quality vinyl. Uh, and uh, I mean, you know, you can't find a cleaner one. And oh, by the way, uh, it said that you, you get a chance when you uh, when you buy this, you can appear on a video. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, you know, how much how much of that twelve thousand two fifty was was appearing on a video? I guess we'll know soon enough when we see whoever uh, you know ever shows up. I think that's cool. Yeah, that's I think um, I, I know uh, Amo is is founded and run by a guy named Larry Casilla. Who we've had on some of our Haggerty stuff. Great, great dude. Uh, fanatical. Uh, so I think having him grow, go through the car. And then really at the end of the day, you've got quite a sharp, practically new Mercedes for $12,000. So uh, super cool. But uh, finally, before we close up this segment, um, there was a, a 3.6 liter powered 914, 1972 Porsche 914. Now these cars came with a, what's called a Type 4 four-cylinder engine, which was also shared with the van again. Uh, there was a version with the six cylinder called the 914.6, which is worth a lot of money. But this one was modified with a much later air cooled engine, a big one, a 3.6 liter flat six. Now, Dave, I owned a 914 not too recently. I sold it. Uh, it had a big 2.4 liter four cylinder. I sold it for 22 grand. Um, this one is leagues nicer, but it sold for $171,000. I, I, I don't know. I can't explain it. I, I think we might have reached maximum Porsche. I'm not sure. I, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe if we look back on this in a year or two years or something like that, this is the tipping point. I've said that before. I don't know. This is huge, huge money for this car. I, it's worth noting. Uh, it's worth talking about. Um, you know, that 170 whatever thousand dollars would not have been my money because. You know, basically, how many other cars could you substitute, or two or three cars that you could substitute that you would have as much fun? Well, for me, I, I get it. It's well, different for everybody. I don't. I don't mean to interrupt, but here's the fascinating thing to to me. What does the Haggerty price guide say? Uh, like a number two, which is just about brand new, nine fourteen six go for it. They're worth what? Okay, hundred. Now I'm have to gonna. I'm gonna have to go digital. You're gonna have to go now. Okay. You know. Because okay. what I'm curious about this car is, is modified. It's a hot rod. Typically, hot rods sell or valued at the value of the parts. So this car has maybe $70,000 worth of parts. It's sold at a huge premium above it. It, it is photographed really, really well. It's from a well-known dealer, so there's a lot of credibility there that goes with it. But it's still a huge premium for a modified car over a stock one, right? Did you figure out? What yeah, well, a stock, a, a stock one, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, for the, uh, uh, for the, the four-cylinder car, Pretty much tops out in the seventies, and it uh, goes as low as ninety five hundred dollars. So, wait, 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 what about the nine fourteen six in particular? The nine fourteen six that goes to uh, one fifty five. Okay, so this for is a, you know for a non modified you know number one perfect car. Perfect car. So this is even higher than that. Super interesting yep. in the Porsche market. Hot rods can be worth more than original, which is, I guess, that's a trend we're seeing across the board, right? Yeah, not hot rods with Porsches. They're outlaws with Porsches, okay, right? Okay, they call them right. outlaws. Right. Yeah, okay. outlaws. Right, <laughs> exactly. I love the the outlaw. You take the chrome bumpers off because you don't want to uh, you don't want to pay to have them uh, re-chromed, and then you call it an outlaw. It's great. Uh, anyhow, uh, yeah, I mean, it, I don't get it, but it's not for me to get. It's for me to observe, right? Now, I guess we'll see if your your thought that this is the the peak. Porsche craze. This represents it. It can't get any higher. I've been saying that for years. So that brand continues to uh, just generate all kinds of excitement. 
so much so that right VW is 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 peeling out Porsche IPO to try and cash in on some of that popularity. So I think that starts starts tomorrow. Starts too, tomorrow. So. All right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, let's move on. That, it's been a that that was a good wrap up of the week. Now let's look at what's coming. Uh, this is our kicking tire segment. Uh, Dave, what are you looking forward to? What are you interested in that's for sale today? Or it's going to close. Well, 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 speaking of old school, we've got a 60 Plymouth Fury that's coming up at RM Sotheby's <clears throat> at Hershey. And Hershey's always been a place to sell older cars. And it, it's a great place to have this thing. This is kind of cool because it's not only presented in its uh, fact, a factory red and white livery, it also has a 1957 Harder's Boat. Now, if you know what that is, you probably don't. It was a boat with tail fins, just like this car has tail fins. So that was an awesome thing. So you've got this pair of uh, vehicles there. Um, this 60's got an older Resto. Um, it has the Sonoramic Commando engine, which is like the best words ever uh, for a, uh, for a uh, engine. And uh, in the Haggerty Price Guide, our number one goes for 57.2. Our number two goes for forty one eight, but you have to throw in the price of the boat there as well. What do you think the boat's going to do? It's just going to make itself or <laughs> higher, or do you think? I, I know I've got twenty grand for that boat, and I have absolutely no use for Seriously? it. Seriously, so it is so cool it with is. those fins. I mean, you know, a fully restored boat. Why not? I don't have a lake nearby, but you know, maybe take it out on the river and crash it into some rocks. Or so something. you Who think knows? the boat in this case, and, and the, the photos are at rmsotheby's.com. It's super interesting of this fury. You think the boat is going to increase the total sale price? You know, when I uh, reshoot the uh, Stephen King movie, Christine, uh, I'm totally going to put a uh, put a boat in it as well. You know, another escape wait, wait, pod. You're, to Dave, get you're not answering the question. What, what do you think? <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of the times here, here's the answer. A lot of the times, the auxiliary thing that goes along with it, the trailer, the fun stuff, doesn't add a lot of money to it, but it adds a ton of interest. Ah. And I think in this particular case, you know, I think anybody would count this thing for ten grand and maybe more. So, you know, let's say, you know, it's like it's it's like the old story about the air conditioned car versus the non air conditioned car. Even if you say you're never going to use it, it's worth more. And I think with this boat, also the same thing. I mean, this will be the king of cars and coffee. No matter what your age is, no matter what your demographic, parading around in this thing, uh, showing up in this thing, and taking all the parking spaces you need to park it uh, would definitely be even ah. the you know like you'd just be the king. You'd I just see. Win. Yes, so. we wouldn't be talking about it without this boat. And you you sort of pointed something out that I think everybody should know. The Fury was the star car in Christine. It was Christine, and um, you know if you look at the front of these things, it does have quite a little scowl to the grill and everything. It's pretty cool. Yep. So we'll we'll come back see what this thing sells for. Um, on my list that that I'm kind of excited about that's up for sale. Um, really, just to talk to you about it. Um, was it's a '66 uh, Chevy Corvette that's right now on Hemmings, and um, this is a not a split window. They were the early ones, but it's still a hard top. Sure. It's in a dark color, which I think does that body. This the second generation Corvette so so well. There's 12 days less. It's already at 60 grand. I just think these are ones that I always want. Dave, what's the price guide telling us? Are these appreciating? Are they have they leveled off? Like, what, what's your sense here? Yeah, they've kind of leveled off. I mean, we've got a uh, you know we've got an interesting situation with these because you know maybe it's one of those everybody who wants one has one right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's part of it. Um, you know, also four twenty sevens versus three twenty sevens. I think some people are starting to realize that the. Uh, uh, 327 is not as drivable. I'm sorry, the 427 is not as drivable and usable on an everyday basis uh, as the um, as the 427 is. It's all about the documentation on these cars now. So if you don't have the correct documentation, the NCRS stuff or the stuff from Bloomington Gold, it can make a huge difference in the price on these cars. Uh, so you know, it's it's one of those things that you you make your choice based on you know, a number of different factors on these cars. So yeah, it's, it's hard to say where this car is going to land. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, how many, what, what, how many days we have left? 12 days. It's already at 60 grand and it says their reserves not met. I mean, yeah, I, I, these have always been too expensive for me, but you pointed out something pretty interesting is like, if you're willing to forego the documentation, if you're willing to accept some 
uh, differences from stock. I think there's a huge savings to get the style and experience of these, which is, I think, what you just said, right? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, so you know, if it's a if it's an L seventy two, that would top out at one eighty five. If it's a uh, L thirty six, it would top out at one fifty eight. Wow. Uh, that's including documentation, though. So I mean, if it's not got it, or if there's a question about it, or whatever, I don't know. I haven't looked into it. But uh, you know, this can be uh, this car could be a uh, hundred grand away from where it's going to end up at this point. Oh my gosh, that's a bummer. I mean, bummer for me, but gorgeous, gorgeous <laughs> car. I think they're yeah, they're, could go. I mean, obviously, the market values them because they're six figure cars, but they don't seem to be spoken about in car person canon as I think they ought to be. They're just uh, stunning, stunning machines. Maybe it's because they're fiberglass. I don't know. Okay, what what else are you looking at? Uh, Meekum's got at their uh, famous tractor sale. They've got a 2002 uh, Ford T Bird. That was the you know that last version of the T Bird. They very much a boulevardier and not a fast car, not a GT car. Um, uh, our number one has thirty nine seven hundred dollars on those thirty nine thousand seven hundred. This is a three thousand one hundred and sixty mile car, and it's in that turquoise, which is a very popular color. Um, what do you feel about these cars? Do you like them or not? I'll tell you what, it's really funny. I was I was at my college reunion a few weeks ago. I don't know, in the earlier in the summer, and there was three of these things parked on the street. The last generation Ford Thunderbird. I mean, for me, it's not my kind of car. I remember thinking it would be sporty and it's built on a Lincoln chassis, so they're very floaty. Um, and I just didn't get it. But you see a lot of folks really enjoying themselves. They get this open air experience, they're comfortable, you can get in and out of them. Um Dave, I, I'm going to say this is this is a car for your generation, maybe not mine. You get my drift? Yeah, no, I get it. Um, I get it. Even though, even though three of them sold uh, showed up at your reunion. Huh? <laughs> no, totally. No, they weren't in the reunion. They were just parked on the street, which I thought was oh weird because sure they didn't build a lot sure of. Them. Okay, were. so this car at thirty thousand miles or three thousand miles, you said that yeah. number one price is the highest price in the Haggerty Price Guide is forty grand. So that's about you what it, it should take to bring this home. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I see bargains in these every once in a while, and I see I see them sell for too much. Uh, you know, you almost can't have an auction these days without having one of these. Really? Uh, but so, yeah, you see them around a lot. They, you know, they built a lot of them. I think these cars were, you know, when they when they came out, very misunderstood. They were yeah. never supposed to be a Mustang rival. Yeah. They're not. Um, and so for the fun factor, again, great fun for the money. Okay. Um I used to own one of these. Uh, it's a 86 Toyota pickup. I had a 92. Uh, and these yeah. are, this generation's getting older. The, mine was like getting so rusty, Dave, that I'd, I'd grind off the rust and paint it, and that would just piss it off and it would come back worse. So <laughs> <laughs> it just rusts like crazy. I get it. So I it, get it. This one's. Yeah, go ahead. This one, Cars and Bids. I know you, you were real yep. keen on this one. Tell us about it. All right, it's at $3,929, $3,929 with four days to go when we're doing this. Um, this is a dark blue with blue interior. It's 152,000 miles, which I guess we're, again, going to have to call that low miles for a, a 86 Toyota pickup. Uh, it's a four-speed, which, of course, is a great thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at this car. It has painted wheels, man. Larry, take a look at the photo when you when you're. I'm looking at it, but they they oversprayed it because they just sprayed. I know the lug nuts are white too. It's ridiculous. They 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 bombed it. I mean, they just bombed it. So it's not what I would call, shall we say, the best presentation ever in the history of cars and bids or any other place. It also has a a Carfax with listing some front end, front end and undercarriage uh, repair to it which is not good. Uh, and it also says that it has some rust in it, which I believe, as you uh, said, was kind of a factory e- equipment thing on these cars. Uh, but that kind of money, we're still at the fun money. The uh, Our number four at the price I got is 3600 So we're right there, basically. Our number one is 269 Please don't pay 269 for this truck. Please don't. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of interest. You were mentioning, like, these were just, you know, for years, they were just uh, sort of like utility. Hand-me-downs. hand-me-downs. They were hand-me-downs. Yeah, yeah they'd, go to, uh, they'd go to the youngest kid in the, uh, you know, in the family. They'd go to, uh, you know, the, the friend who had the uh, startup business doing yard work or something like that. But now they're collectible. Uh, 
It's not with these wheels and tires. They're not with these wheels. Okay. It's especially not collectible. Like, but hey, you can get a get a set of Steelies or put some mags on. It'll be fine. I'm just thinking. I'm, uh, this is bringing back some flashbacks of the four speed, the roll down windows. Like in the summer at the Jersey Shore, sitting in something like that, my back sweating and sticking to the seats. I mean, <laughs> exactly, exactly. The 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 hottest vinyl in the world, and no air conditioning, and it's only got you know two windows and uh, you know a couple of air vents to to get the thing cool. So uh, yeah, you know, for most of them, they don't have AC. Uh, my my Toyota pickup had the the V6, which was later. It was a '92, and it's still really slow. I mean, these things, I can't imagine. The other thing that's fascinating about these is um, you you sit on the floor with your legs sprayed out, very much like a sports yep. car. You think you're going to be sitting up like in a sport U, kind of like in a chair, but it's not the way they are, which is another one of the things that turned me off about it, uh, but still cool. Yeah, still cool. That's. I mean, it's all about the look, right, Larry? Yeah, okay. Well, why don't we, there's, there's two more we can talk about, and um, why you, you brought to my attention this thing called the bitter SC? Yeah, yeah, it's the I, bitter end, man. It's a, <laughs> it's a, these were German cars, usually with Opel mechanicals. Um, hmm. It was a it was a, a pretty good alternative to a to you know for when you were looking for an exotic car in the nineteen seventies and nineteen eighties. This one is on the market by Bonhams, which is their online. Uh, marketplace. Um, it's at two thousand one hundred and five dollars right now. So anybody who says, uh, you know, this is a rich man's hobby, you can't get anything interesting for under fifty grand, et cetera, et cetera. No, you can. I mean, this car is not going to close for probably a heck of a lot more than this, maybe eight thousand or something. We have them as a price guide, and the low end at eighty four hundred, okay. the high end at thirty six thirty six thousand five hundred. This one has the Opal motor. It's a bitter SC coupe. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a car you have to explain to everybody, but you know, some real luminaries in the, uh, old car world, uh, had these, the Winterstroms who owned, uh, uh, Greenwich Concours for, you know, forever. Uh, they both had one, uh, Mr. And Mrs. Both had a, uh, a bitter SC coupe. So, uh, and they like those cars. They love those cars. I know that, uh, you know, we talked about it before with, uh, uh, I talked about it before with Mr. Winterstrom before he passed, and uh, he just adored the car. And so there are a lot of people out there to do. Here's a car you can probably pick up for under eight grand or around eight grand. That's a lot of car for the money. Yeah. So this is just like the German version of the '80s Jaguar XJ, right? Well, what a perfect way to say. How did you? I don't know. Smart Maybe I'm a sudden? writer. Who knows? I love it. Uh, yeah, I love it. You must have looked it up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I. I it, Good, great, great point. Lots of interesting stuff out there for not a lot of money. That's perfect. And then, uh, you know, finally, you you point out another late model Subaru WRX. You're fascinated by these things, aren't you? I really am. This is, you know, again, the S209. We talked about this before. Uh, the 2019, there's been two of these cars. They're bookends. They're the same car, except for they're not. One of them had 10 miles on it. Uh, this one's on cars and bids, and right now it's a sixty nine thousand two oh nine. Um, it's got fifteen hundred miles. This, of course, is a six speed two thousand nineteen Subaru STI WRX S two oh nine. This is uh, you know this is the fifteen hundred mile one. We saw one sell on uh, Bring a Trailer uh, just at the end of the month, August thirtieth. Uh, ten mile example went for one oh seven six. So maybe you can save a little money. Maybe you can get this thing in the seventies. And uh, you know, save yourself uh, forty grand. Who knows? Oh, right. With just a uh, thousand more miles, it'd be a big discount, is what you're suggesting, right? Well, who knows? I mean, I'm really watching this to see how it ends. So, uh, you know, I'll be there at the end of the bids on this one and make sure that uh, uh, I, I know it. I'm not going to be a bidder, but uh, I am an interested party, as they say. Yeah, I mean, also on cars and bid, there's a Lucid Air Dream. And this is that all electric sports sedan at Camisa. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it was, it was fashioned yeah. off of our favorite M5. The guys who are making it are real gearheads. You know, Camisa did a great video on Haggerty's YouTube channel that you can see about these, and it's already up to a hundred grand. You're seeing a lot of these like hard to get cars on the auction platforms. It's like the Hummer EVs. It's like the Lucid. It's, it's almost like the... The Lightnings. The Lightnings. The Rivians. The Raptors. All up the there. Raptor will do this. Yeah. It's almost like the uh, limited edition sneaker market. Very much yeah. of, I got to yeah. have it first. I'm willing to pay a crap ton to get it first. And then, 
you know, whatever happens after that, I don't care, right? I love watching it because this is not a market that I'm in. I love watching and seeing where it's going. I will say that I've been watching the uh, the online uh, uh, lightning Ford Lightning market, and yes, they have been getting cheaper uh, by the week. So we'll see what happens with the other markets as well. They're still selling for a little premium over list, but uh, that you know that thirty thousand dollars is now over list is now a pipe dream for a lot of these things. Well, I tell you, I like what you called it. It's a market. It's like there's. Yeah. The the supply and the demand is dictating the price. So in the early days, the, the demand is highest, the supply is the lowest, the price is high. And then you're making the bet that you can get that price before it goes down, essentially, right? Exactly, exactly. I, you know, hey, it's okay for to pay to be the first one on the block, but when you're the 15th one, you know, in your neighborhood with a lightning or a, you know or whatever it is a rivian a lucid uh, it, you know you might feel a little yeah i paid a premium to have it but it was worth it to me yeah this car was stickered at a 170 new so it's already at 100 we'll see it's got five days left where it goes i mean they're i haven't driven one but people i trust say that they're fantastic machines they look beautiful so we'll have to figure out one more let's just talk about real quick there's this spiker c8 on p car market this is a 2006 these were weird strange cars uh largely based on audi mechanicals and they came from a dutch kind of pseudo aircraft manufacturer spiker do you have any sense of what these things are worth now uh, you know this this is not a market that i follow uh, i've i've seen them at different auctions you know different land based auctions i looked at them i think some of them are really cool looking they use a uh, spiker has always been a really great design house in terms of using chrome have you noticed oh that, that you know, every, it, well, everybody either, else has walked away from chrome and they just love the stuff and i think it really works well it's either super cool or super gaudy depending on where you're standing i mean it, yeah, i mean every, sure. everything's got machine turned aluminum all over the interior i mean i go back and forth on some days i'm like super awesome and then i'm looking at this thing now i'm like oh man just too much yeah, well, I mean, you know, and I should have said bright work instead of chrome. I'm showing my age again, but anyhow, the uh, the long the long story short is it looks great. Uh, I like them. Uh, not a market that uh, I'm in at all. Uh, and talk about a specialty car. I mean, you know, these are like basically hand built, one off for everyone they do. So, well, uh, it, yeah, it's this it's auction it says you have to bid. You have to start the bidding at a hundred grand. And yeah, sure. I, I think that's going to be a little bit of a reach, don't you? No, I think I think it'll start, but I mean, you know, who knows where it's going to end up. I think these cars are best hand sold, to tell you the truth, mm. like, uh, you know, at a dealership or with somebody who can explain them. Uh, and then I would do a land-based auction on this more than I would do a uh, more than I would do a virtual auction mm. on this. Absolutely. I got it. Interesting. Okay, let's move into the question yeah. section. Um first, we have Robbie from Allen Park. He wants to know, should I paint my 1978 Corvette before I sell it? The current repaint is faded. This is a good question. What yeah. do you think? You know, I'm going to say no because uh, I'm that guy who painted a car once and spent a lot of money doing it and then sold it to a guy and he didn't like the color and he brought it back to me like two weeks later to show it to me. He took it to Mako and got the presidential. Okay, <laughs> So I had spent in the thousands and he spent in the hundreds. Um, I think the best thing to do is to, um, uh, Allen Park, Michigan. That's where that, uh, big uniroyal, t- uniroyal tire. Yeah. Is, right on 94. Right? Yep. Yeah. Right outside of Detroit. Anyhow, I'd say no, I'd say polish it up and let the, uh, let the car sit for itself. The other thing is, you know, how much do you spend for a paint job? Well, we can go to Mako and get the presidential for a grand, I guess, or less. Uh, and you can also spend you know, I've seen people spend in the hundreds of thousands of dollars right. and, uh, you know, that car, that car is not worthy of that. So I would leave it. Alone. Yeah. The, 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 the counter argument to this um, is that, you know, based on what we were talking about before, the photography and presentation of that 3.6 liter 914 really, really drove the price. A 1978 Absolutely. Corvette is, is the, the upside's not that high. So it would be hard to recoup the cost of a decent paint job which if it's the whole car assuming there's no cracks it's just a sand and paint is thousands and thousands of dollars so i i agree with you on this i wouldn't either let the next owner buy it as a project and uh it'll be easier but i do think dave it's going to be harder to sell with 
crummy looking paint. Yeah, it makes it hard to sell. He's not going to get as much, but it, okay. So he spends twelve thousand five hundred on a you know an okay, you know, very nice, but you know, not a show car paint job. He's not going to get an extra twelve thousand no. five hundred out of it. It's just as simple as yeah. that. So the math doesn't. That's a good work. point. Okay, June from Palos Verdes, California. Uh, you know, uh, this is a, a tricky one. My, my apologies, June, for your loss. Um, she says I can't find all the paperwork to my late husband's nineteen sixty nine nine eleven. He spent a tons of money on it 15 years ago, but I have no record. Is it worth searching for everything before I sell it? Yeah, I think we know the answer to this one, Larry. We uh, the answer is yes. Um, the you, you know I I'm not going to say to turn the house upside down, but I'd look in every place you can look, uh, look in other car files, uh, you know all that sort of stuff to make sure it wasn't misplaced. If you uh, if you had it repaired at a big shop, there's a really good chance they'll still have a copy of the, that work that was done, uh, possibly electronic. Um, <clears throat> but you know, uh, it used to be you sold just the car, and the car was the stake and the sizzle. Uh, now the car is the stake, and the paperwork is the sizzle, and it makes it very much worthwhile. And I and I feel for this this uh, this widow, but uh, um, you know, and it and it might not be any fun searching for this stuff. But if you want to maximize value. Uh, go go take a look and look for it. Don't you agree? Well, I mean, you're the expert. You've been doing this for decades, buying and selling. For me, I was thinking what jumped out. If it's been sitting for 15 years since the, all the major work, it kind of doesn't matter because no matter what was done is worn out anyway. So uh, no, you're wrong. <laughs> clearly, I'm wrong. You know, but this, okay, yeah, but people people want the history. Of course, now. they want the history. You know, it, but you know, I wouldn't sweat it too too much because, like I said, it's still. Uh, it doesn't mean because it was done 15 years ago. It doesn't need new tires. It's still going to need new tires. Yeah, but if the motor was rebuilt by a specialist or something like that, and it's only got four thousand miles since, I think that would make a difference. Uh, yeah, you know, who knows. Uh, I, I would say that, you know, it's all part of the history of the car. And so many people buy, you know, the provenance, the history of the car. And so for that, from that standpoint, it, it makes it more interesting. It does not mean the 911 is unsellable. My goodness, we've seen them out there, you know, at auctions and, uh, you know, even with private sellers who bought it from somebody who didn't have any paperwork. So uh, it's just that you lose the sizzle, you still have the stake. Yeah. Paperwork's always, always better, I think, is a moral of that story. Thank you for your questions. You can put them in the comments. and. We'll do our best to answer it. I think that's it, Dave. Do you have any final comments for this week as we start the fall season? Yeah, get out and drive. I mean, you know, for goodness sake, there's going to be a uh, there's going to be a time not too distant future from now where you're not going to be able to get out because of the weather. One other thing, and here's an important thing to remember in fall: if you're thinking about selling your car over the winter. Get it out this weekend or next weekend and photograph it while there is still leaves on the trees and the grass is still green in most areas. Now, that doesn't you know count in some areas, but uh, uh, take your pictures now, even if you're going to sell the car in January. I think this is a good time to uh, really peruse all your local papers and internet stuff because this is when people are sick of their cars. They've enjoyed it over the season. They just want it gone. And you can yep. uh, frequently... Especially if you're not, you don't have to buy it. You can get some good deals. You can lowball. You can do things like that. And uh, so this is entering a fun time to buy. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a good way to look at it. But uh, you know, it's it's heading into the to the uh, dark season for those of us who are not uh, in uh, sunny Florida or sunny California. So uh, get out and use. Yeah, the yeah. Car, right? I agree. These cars are investments in joy. Right. Buy what you love, and you won't be disappointed. Got it. Uh, thank you, everybody. Catch you all next week on No Reserve.